Oh my god, it's Resident Evil with dinosaurs! Oh yeah! Look at that stupid fucked up nail! I just really don't get it. I'm sure that might be a valid reasoning for that kind of situation, but I seriously doubt I'll ever get the right answer. So you are developer or publisher or both and you happen to have one very successful franchise at your disposal. You milk it as you see fit because it's a natural business practice. But some of them have two or more IPs of great value that should generate numerous sequels. And more often than not you would see them downright abandoning those IPs. Why? It's not that they weren't successful. Take a look at the Squaresoft from the PS1 times when they were making wonders after wonders. Parasite Eve? Dead after third birthday. That wasn't even a proper Parasite Eve sequel. Chrono Break? Never gonna happen, even though Chrono Cross was very successful. Take a look at the Sony and The Legend of Dragoon. Very good JRPG. Sold very well. Sequel? In your dreams, Dart. In today's video, we will talk about Capcom's game that suffered the same fate despite being quite popular back then. As you can see it in the title, the game is Dino Crisis. So what exactly is Dino Crisis, a few of you might ask. In essence, we can say for sure that it's Resident Evil with Dinosaurs. That's it, roll the credits now, cut, done, finito, arrivederci. Or not. Let's get back into the situation, shall we? Yes, Dino Crisis might have borrowed the same formula Resident Evil has perfected for several years, but underneath semi-fixed camera angles and tank controls lies a game that is worth checking out, and dismantling the dinosaurs will be a time well spent. Sure, the story is blatantly basic, or rather uninteresting, it just serves as a plot device and nothing else. The puzzles are not that challenging, even though they're cool, but the setting and the dinos are more than making up for it. For the extinct creature that we as a human race, at least in the known history, have never seen in our lives, the developers at Capcom, in my opinion, got a pretty good idea how to make them believable. I presume that they used the existing lizards for the inspiration behind their AI and moveset. Unlike zombies in Resident Evil that are slowly moving towards you until they grab you, dinos are observing you and attack suddenly as they see it fit. You can never know what's their next move, so this adds to the suspense. Especially if you find yourself in a situation where two or more dinos are attacking you and you have no ammunition. Add a suspenseful or sometimes rather unnerving music and you got yourself an excellent horror gaming experience. As for setting, I guess the easiest idea in Capcom minds was to put a giant building or institution as a base for exploring and most of the story. Resident Evil 1 has a mansion, Resident Evil 2 has a police station, Dino Crisis has a research facility. In fact, the entire story of the game is located on a remote island called Ibis, where this facility is situated and Dr. Kirk with his minions is undergoing some sketchy experiments in developing weapons using so-called third energy technology. This probably caught attention from those whose attention needs to be caught, to say the least, and Special Operation Raid Team, abbreviated SORT, sent Tom to investigate what's going on, just to verify that Dr. Kirk is in fact not dead and is doing aforementioned work. SORT also sends four agents afterwards, Gale, Rick, Cooper and you as a redhead Regina to get Kirk to custody. This wouldn't be a typical plot if somebody doesn't die right from the start. Cooper was unfortunate to one and was regurgitated by T-Rex right in the FMV intro. By the time of the accident he was away from the other three, so they didn't even know what kind of danger lies ahead, so they proceeded to the facility and that's where the game begins. Just right at the beginning when you get a glimpse of the conversation of our team, you can safely assume their behavior and characteristics. When you see blonde-haired brute force muscle man Gale, you know that he is sticking to the mission, gathering evidence on sight and going all in on the situation ahead. That means he definitely won't refrain from using heavy weaponry to eliminate the threat, in other words killing the dinos. 
Rick has more tactical approach, plus he's a skilled technician. He would rather gain access to control rooms and hack the security or open locked doors and thus made the way easier to slip past the dinos rather than committing a dinosaur onslaught. When you have these two as opposing forces, you know that some arguments will be thrown here and there on what to do and how to proceed to a next situation. Rick would like to take things slowly and rationally. Gail, as a veteran, wants to carry on with the mission even if it means to go guns blazing. You, as Regina, is somewhat of a mediator in between all of that. And on the several occasions, you'll be given the choice of doing things Rick's or Gail's way. Regina delivers a dry humor and is often quite unfazed by the sight of the mutilated corpses. It's like an everyday job for her. Oh look, there are body parts scattered all over the floor. Wow, cool. That's disgusting. That's disgusting. As soon as you take control in the game, you will feel at home if you played any Resident Evil from the era. Tank controls, items, weapons, door animations, it's all there. Unlike Resident Evil, the mixing of the medicines and the chemicals is more complex. It won't be long until you make various strong medipacks or poison darts from tranquilizer ones. Yep, you can even enhance the power of darts. Unfortunately, there are no vaults to store extra items, but item boxes scattered around the building. Each one of the item box requires you to have certain amount of plugs to open them. As for the weapons, Regina will have handgun, shotgun and grenade launcher. Every weapon has a multiple types of ammunition, so you choose it as you see it fit. Naturally, bigger dinos require better firepower as they are tougher to kill, so keep that in mind. Just like Resident Evil, Dino Crisis has its own puzzles scattered around here and there, but they are relatively easy to solve. Some of them are even logistics based, such as moving containers with crane. Luckily, you won't be disturbed by dinos while doing that. More attention was given to collecting items such as key cards, keys and safe numbers. Also, to unlock certain important doors, you will need to collect DDK disks and codes to figure out passwords. Type the correct ones and there you go. I believe that, in short terms, I have pretty much described the entire game to you without spoiling anything. Dino Crisis has four endings depending on the choices you make and if you do either of them under 5 hours, which is very much doable, you will unlock a new mode, Operation Wipeout. It's a mini game where you choose a character, then you need to eradicate a certain amount of dinos and escape to the extraction point before time runs out. A neat feature that would probably be packed as a DLC today. Anyways, pack it all in in a game and you have a nice little experience that people recognized, so it has sold in many million copies. This meant that the sequel will be made, and it was. But Dino Crisis 2 radically deviated from the Resident Evil formula the first game adopted. Dino Crisis 2 rather became its own thing with introducing way more action, shooting and point system. It kinda worked as a refreshing take on a genre that was becoming oversaturated with clones. After that, Capcom kinda lost it, and started to spew a forgettable crap like Dino Stalker, a light gun shooter, Dino Crisis Dungeon in Chaos, FPS for mobile games and atrocious Dino Crisis 3. Xbox exclusive so some of you probably don't even know about its existence. And believe me, it's better that way. No wonder nobody in the Capcom ever thought about making a new game. But still, 18 years have passed and all that was left was occasional rumor about Capcom making Dino Crisis 4. As far as we know, they were just that. Rumors. But when you look how good Resident Evil 2 Remake is, you cannot help but wonder how Dino Crisis would look and feel like to play if Capcom would make it in a similar fashion. Just imagine how awesome it would be. I admit, at first when Resident Evil 2 Remake was announced, I was highly skeptical about changing the gameplay style. I thought it should have been done in the way Resident Evil 1 Remake was done. Fixed cameras, tank controls and overall gameplay should have remained the same. But when I saw first gameplay of Resident Evil 2 Remake, I was blown away. The fear of Capcom's potential ruin of a remake was uncalled for. The remake turned out to be great. Unfortunately, Resident Evil 3 Remake was a half ass rush job, but I guess it's passable. The core gameplay mechanic is still great, but cut levels and the way Nemesis was sorted out is stupid. Obviously, Capcom made great engine for the games, and I believe deep in my heart the Dino Crisis Remake done the same way Resident Evil 2 Remake was made would be awesome. Oh, and Regina would look... Damn, man. 
So please, Capcom, do us a favor and do a Dino Crisis remake. We want to shoot Dinos again and a T-Rex in its big ass sharp pointed teeth mouth. You know the game would sell like hot cupcakes. Please, Capcom. Please. Don't neglect this jam. Dino Crisis is dwelling in the past long enough. Hope the Capcom will hear this cry or something like that and announce it someday. And I hope you have enjoyed the video. Until next time.